The son of well-to-do parents who, whether out of talent or weakness, chooses a so-called intellectual occupation as an artist or scholar, has special difficulties with those who bear the distasteful title of colleagues. It is not merely that his independence is envied, that the seriousness of his intentions is doubted, and that he is presumed to be a secret envoy of the established powers. Such mistrust is born out of resentment, yet would usually find its confirmation. However, the actual resistances lie elsewhere. The occupation with intellectual things has meanwhile become practical, a business, a business with a strict division of labor, with branches and numerous clauses, um, which means restricted entry. Those who are materially independent, who choose out of repugnance towards the shame of earning money, are not inclined to recognize this. For this, he is punished. He is no professional, ranks in the hierarchy of competitors as a dilettante, regardless of how much he knows about his subject, and must, if he wishes to pursue a career, display professional tunnel vision even narrower than that of the most narrow-minded expert. The suspension of the division of labor to which he is driven, and which the economic state of affairs allows him, within certain limits, to realize, is considered especially scandalous. This betrays the aversion to sanction the hustle and bustle dictated by society, and high and mighty competence does not permit such idiosyncrasies. The departmentalization of the spirit is a means of abolishing such there, where it is not ex officio or contra contractually obligated. It does its work all the more surely as those who continually reject the division of labor, if only in the sense that they enjoy their work, reveal by this selfsame measure their vulnerabilities, which are inseparable from the moments of their superiority. Thus is the social order assured. This one must play along because one could not otherwise live, and that one who could indeed live is kept outside because they don't want to play along. It is as if the class which the independent intellectual deserted from revenges itself by, forci by forcibly pushing through its demands precisely where the deserter sought refuge.